What's going on, my Ezers? It's your boy, Chef Drew, a.k.a. Chef, a.k.a. Big Drew, a.k.a. I like his bomber jacket. <laughs> Yo, we talking about sales today. I got my homie in here with us. Before we get into that conversation, please, please, please do whatever it is you got to do. Like, subscribe, do all the things so we can keep on bringing you this here content. And remember, go check out my homie John on his podcast, Last night's coffee is just two guys talking about what they want to talk about. Support them. All right, y'all. So when I was thinking about this week's conversation or topic, you know, I was like, let me talk about something that we have not addressed at all yet. However, at least not directly. However, it touches every single one of us in our businesses, on our day-to-day, -day, and that's sales. I got my homeboy, Jonathan Black, with us today. Jonathan, thank you for coming to Eating Chambers Channel. I'm so glad you're here, for yeah, real. I'm honored. Great. I'm honored you to ask. <laughs> Jonathan is a corporate salesman. He's been in sales for a long time. He's dabbled in entrepreneurship himself. He's a supporter of me. He's a supporter of the show. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we do life together. We're going to do business together one day. I'm speaking that into existence. And now we're about Amen. to do this, this, this video together. Yeah. JB. Amen. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. All right, Jonathan. Let's just get started. Tell us a little bit about you. Not necessarily about your profession, your oh. career, but just a little bit about Jonathan Black. I uh, was born on a naval base. Uh, my dad was still in the military. When I don't I think I knew that. I don't, you may have not. I don't think yeah, I knew I was it. born in Jacksonville, Florida on uh, the Naval Air Station in Jacksonville. Uh, was there for a couple years and then my dad got out of active duty and uh, moved up here to take a job with Delta. And okay. Spent the rest of my life here in uh, Metro Atlanta, South yeah. Metro Atlanta specifically. And uh, yeah, so I have... Uh, I have a wife, two kids. Um, I grew up uh, go attending almost the same two, basically two churches my entire life. A lot of my life has been marked by stability. You know, mm -hmm. I had two great parents. Um, I don't have any sort of like, um, you know, struggle story like like my wife does, uh, who overcame a lot of adversity or anything like that. I was really blessed um, as a child growing up uh, to have two loving parents. Um, you know. Things were always amazing. You know, yep. my dad had some some trials, like was laid off. Um, you know, there was not everything was always rainbows and sunshine. But in terms of like the essentials, the yep. core things, you know, that they you were there when you grow up. I had that. And so, yeah. And then that. And so that's that's a little bit about me, like up until adulthood. But yeah, I don't know if that answers okay. your question. But that's a, that's. A do you have any, did, did you grow up with any kind of entrepreneurial influence? Did your mom and dad ever have any like yeah. side hustles or things they did? Yeah, they did. They did. In fact, my, uh, my parents, I don't know if you knew this or not. My parents owned a vending route uh, for many, many years. Uh, New information. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited right now. Yeah, yeah actually, it's, it's, quite, it's funny. So we lived in Riverdale. So it started when we, my, when my parents moved here, they moved to Riverdale. Clayco. Clayton County. <laughs> Uh, not born, but raised. Uh, but uh, yeah, lived in Riverdale for quite a while, many years. Um, and yeah, when my dad, when, I think it was around the time, right around the time after my dad got laid off from Delta. Okay. He was picking up a lot of side jobs, trying to make in, you know, ends meet. And right. my mom was working too. And they ended up buying some vending machines and slowly started buying more, placing really? them in local businesses around Fayette and uh, in Clayton County. Okay. And um, it slowly built up and they would store all the product in our garage. And like our garage was like a miniature warehouse for yep. many years. And I would I would travel with them to go help fill the vending machine, right. take the money out and do all that stuff. So they had that, that vending route for many years, I ended up selling all the, the routes and the machines. But um, that how, was how, like my first foray into seeing entrepreneurship. That's right? awesome. How old were you when that was popping off? When you were when they were doing I that, I was probably I was probably somewhere in the seven six to seven years old. Okay, so up, you, up until about until we moved about until we moved to Fayette. So probably probably until about 11, 12 years old. Oh, so you were able to be a part of it, oh, see yeah. it, live it. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, my brother owned a vending machine business for a while, and my parents just stuck their toe in that world for a little bit too oh, when they first I came to this country. Yeah, my dad he used to vend the peanuts. Ah. 
he came to this country and to make money to begin with, they would, he worked his day job. I think he was a janitor or something. And then that night, him and my mom roasted peanuts in their, in their apartment. Oh, yeah. So they were making the product. So they, they roasted the peanuts. Back then, it wasn't all the red tape that it is today. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? You can do anything. Back then, you could just, they alive, you can eat it. You know what I'm saying? So he, uh, they would roast peanuts in their, in their apartment and drive around to uh, different bars and places. Dang. And hustling, hustling them roasted peanuts and vending machines. That's crazy. I didn't know that. There was a time you could get roasted peanuts by the handful from a vending machine. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, think about. I yeah. guess if you that would never be allowed. You could <laughs> no. never do that today. <laughs> no, no. But you know, different. You back then, you could buy a house for ten thousand dollars too. So it was this, a long time ago, y'all. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> or twenty grand, whatever. You could buy a car for three thousand back then. I know. <laughs> So I'm just saying, cool, cool, cool. So I did not know that about you. That's awesome. So, yeah, okay, that gives us a little bit of background. What do you What do you like to do for fun, man? I like to play sports. Uh, right now, pickleball. Shout out to all my pickleballers out there. Uh, pickleball. Are you pickleball? I just started playing. That's one of them skinny know. people sports, yo. <laughs> I don't play pickleball, yo. I eat pickles. You feel I'll me? Say, I'll take it a step further. And I'll say what you probably want to say. It's definitely a white person. Skinny sport. white people sport. <laughs> I mean, uh, I never see no, you know, yeah, I don't see no brothers <laughs> out there. I ain't out seen them either. Football. You know what I'm saying? But, but uh, we we gotta have, we, we gotta change that. But yeah. I've just started playing uh, a few months ago, and I'm like hooked. So really? That's my new like hobby. Uh, but yeah, anything sports related, uh, follow what like watching sports, things like that. JB, you ain't competitive, are you? I'm extremely competitive. <laughs> I knew that question. Yeah. <laughs> My, my, as we get into whatever we're getting into, like the single, like the, the single source of, of like fuel for my life is like basically ignited by competitiveness. Yeah. So like internally, which is probably why I love sports because it's yeah. just competition, which I think is a great segue. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you just lobbed that thing over yeah, to me, bud. Trying, Thank man. you so much. <laughs> so now, did I speak right? I know you have tapped, stuck your, let's talk about that first. You have stuck your toe into the entrepreneurship pool before. Tell us a little bit about what that looked like for you, what you did, all that stuff. Yeah, man. Um, I know the answers to these questions, y'all. I'm just trying to bless y'all with it. You know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, no, it started off as a, an idea. Um, uh, I don't know if he's watching this, but I'll, I'll give his name. Jonathan Mullins, a guy you know very yep. well, and, and Joe. Um, but he and I had always talked for years about uh, whenever we would go to weddings, mm -hmm. we noticed the, the DJ setup was like... It, it never like we, we would we would always be like man the music sucks or or the the, the quality of the the sound wasn't mm -hmm. very good or and we would talk about man like we could we could do that right. fairly easily at least we thought we could and, right and we we probably went back and forth on that idea for years and then one day like he he and I both realized like hey we could benefit from like an extra stream of income yeah uh, it, there's not a lot of uh, expenses. You just let me, need let me cut you real quick. Yeah. Just so y'all know, the Jonathans do have music yeah. backgrounds with sound and all that stuff. So it's not just like, oh, let's That's probably my other hobby. I should have mentioned that. I yeah. like playing, I play drums. So. But yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's so it ain't just like, let's be DJs. They know what they're doing. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, we were like, it can't be that expensive. Kind of research it. We were like, okay, like, Probably all up to start. We we need a sound system, mm -hmm. a table, you know, some things to make our, our setup look a little nice. And we were like, that, it didn't cost that much money, so we borrowed. We literally just borrowed the money mm -hmm. um, on interest and uh, bought it and <laughs> and faked it till we made it. Man, we had never DJed a single thing in our lives. Yeah, uh, but we, I mean, everyone who's been to events, weddings, prom, like everyone's been to events yeah. where they see DJ. So it wasn't like it was completely foreign. Right. But we're but we'd never done it ourselves. And so like I was I, I just took as many free-ish type events mm -hmm. to start just to get my, my right. our 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 feet wet. And we just pretended like we knew what we were doing yeah. until we did know what we were doing. Yeah. And um so we DJed weddings, we DJed proms, dances, corporate we did some corporate events. Um and uh had a lot of fun doing it. Made some money along the way. Dope, dope. So let me let me reiterate two things that stood out to me when you were just talking. 
One, y'all, we've talked about this in the past. He said the way him and somebody, him and a buddy were sitting around, just like one day me and some buddies were sitting around. For me, it ended up being a smoker that was purchased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I faked it till I made it. <laughs> but you had a, you had probably more experience I, than I did. <laughs> I will say I could cook. Yeah, yeah. However, no joke, doing barbecue the way I do it, wood burning, all that stuff. That makes sense. It is a different beast. I learned that the hard way. However, one of the first catering gigs I ever did, you're gonna laugh, was at CCC. That's funny. I did. Uh, we did a fundraiser. Oh yeah, I know and, what you're talking about. And. JB, I made that barbecue. No, now looking back, I know what I was doing, y'all. <laughs> I know what I was doing. It was a rough go on this, on this, on this, this smoker with this barbecue. But everyone just kept on coming up to me afterwards. It was like, yo, that's the best barbecue I ever ate in my life. That validation. And you know that just kept on happening. But in any case, I digress. Let's get back to it though. So, like I was saying, you and some and a friend were sitting around. You came up with an idea, and you literally started this thing out of the living room, off the couch. Oh, yeah. As so many grassroots entrepreneurs have do and have done, like I told you before. Then when it came to the financing, one of the things I always talk to people about that people are scared to talk about in entrepreneurship, especially entrepreneurship, so thank you for sharing, is how do you fund this stuff? A lot of times people see the motion going on, and they're just like... Yeah. Dang, these folks, they just think folks got money. He just said he ain't have the money. I didn't have the money. They financed it and they made it happen and they and they faked they faked it till they made it. So in any case, that's super, super dope. So how long did you do that for? Are you still doing it? What's going on with I'm the not DJ? Doing it. So we did it for four years. Okay. Uh, the first year we talking about finances. I mean, I hope this will help the people watching mm -hmm. here as part of the channel, but like we decided we didn't want we there was so there's so much profit in services like mm -hmm. meaning like we weren't selling a product so we didn't have to we didn't have to account for like uh expenses every single time our right. expenses were our equipment yeah so we had decided where everything that we make is going to go to pay off the equipment mm -hmm. that way when that time comes when it's paid off everything at that point is just 100 percent profit right until we got to replace something that's smart and so we spent most of the first year paying off our equipment. We didn't pay ourselves anything. Okay. So our wives were like, hold on. So y'all are gone. Like <laughs> how, long, how many weekends, you know, a right. year and we've seen no free. And we, that's where that, that's where that discipline is really, you really have to kick in because the temptation was to, to take that money and just pay ourselves and right. slowly pay the equipment off. But we knew like, Hey, if we take a year, pay it all off, Everything that from that point on is just profit. Right. There's no expenses at that point. So that was the route that we decided to take. And so at the, the for after the first year, the, the next three years, every event we did was just money profit. In, money in the bank. Yeah. So listen, y'all, as always, Jonathan JB is just giving his perspective. Yeah. You don't have to do what he did or what they did. <laughs> no, no. It doesn't make the way he did it any better than what you did do if you take a salary or if you decide to split up whatever these are all just different options for what's available for us to do as we make this walk yeah uh down grassroots entrepreneurship so you did it for four years and then did you guys just sell did you just decide it wasn't worth your time uh, well, how'd you dissolve this, this might be a nice depending on where you want to take this interview it might be it might be a nice segue but uh i ended up getting a a, an, a job offer that was literally too good to, to give up to 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 not take right um and that required me to to work in new york city oh okay uh so at that point i talked to my business partner at the time and i said hey i got this offer i'm gonna take it um, yeah. it's gonna change you know the trajectory of my career and my family um i gotta take it and you know he was like well, i don't i don't have any interest in doing it by myself so we ended up just liquidating Got the, the assets and and stopping at that time okay which cool. is a real shame because we would got to the point at mm -hmm. that point in time we had a we had a wedding venue lined up we, we were the preferred djs mm -hmm. where i had to go and like you know cancel all the booking i mean we were getting to the point at that time 
where we were getting no we weren't doing any work marketing wise right like people were coming to us and being like right. hey we want to use you guys to dj so that was a difficult decision but like i said in my career um something something was something that i had wanted to do and, and came up was right. too good to pass up so. have you ever regretted it no i don't regret no i don't regret it good. but i miss I have always had that entrepreneurial itch in mm -hmm. my in my right. body, in my brain. And yeah. you can ask the people closest to me, you can certainly ask my wife. It's always something that I'm thinking about. Yeah. So that's the part I miss. The, yeah. the part I miss is just being in that entrepreneurial journey. Okay. But yeah. Well, I would like to tell you for me personally, I don't know. I just have always, especially now as I've 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 gotten to know you more as an adult. You're an entrepreneur. I don't know what it is or what it looks like, JB, but if you're an not an entrepreneur now, it's coming back. So don't worry about it. Take this time, everything <laughs> seasons. I'm sure it's gonna come back because yeah. you the people, you know, there are some people who are who are who learn to be entrepreneurs, and that's fine. But then there are some people, I feel like you're one of them, I'm definitely one of them. It's it's just in you, you know, we're born in it. We 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 get fueled by the thought of building something. Now, you're in corporate sales. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about, about that. Yeah. Uh, and this is the reason why we are here today, guys. Well, I'll start a little bit before that because yep. I've been, so I've, my entire career has been sales minus okay. a year. So um, I got out of, I got, I went to, went to school and that's a, probably another story for an, a completely another time. <laughs> but I, I was, in, I was in college for Longer than I should have been um, chasing all kinds of different majors. I ended up starting pre-pharmacy. Okay. I thought I was going to be a pharmacist. Yep. And then I switched to nursing because you know, I thought I was going to be a nurse. And then I'm in business. Yeah. Which is really where my passion mm -hmm. lied. Um, and then once I graduated business degree, uh, it was in marketing. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm going to go work for a marketing company. Okay. I thought that was like my, my jam, my, my thing that I wanted to do. And I spent about 10 months in that role mm -hmm. as a startup yep. company in Peachtree City. And I thought... Like, I was like, oh, I really love being in this startup type of environment where, you know, the, the company's just, yeah. it's small and it's tight knit, but it's growing really fast. And I remember the, the EVP, kind of like the number two at the time, who's also in charge of sales, came up to me and was like, hey, we're growing so fast. We need our salesperson. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in sales before? And I was like, no, but I think I'd be good at it. And uh, he's like, all right, you're hired. You're, you know our product. Yeah. You know what we do. You're hired. And that was my first taste of sales. And it was the hardest job that I've ever had. Okay. And the most I've ever learned at the same time. Yeah. And I knew in that moment, I was like, I could, I could make a lot of money uh -huh. in this career. It could also be really hard and stressful, but I think like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And ever since that time, um, so that at that point it was, it's well over, I don't know, 12, 13 years now. Okay. Uh, ever since then, I've been in ver variety of sales roles. Okay. So uh, that was that was for a marketing company, and then I worked for an industrial distributor who sold like industrial parts okay. to like manufacturing companies. Mm -hmm. And then the job that I just talked about mm -hmm. that kind of put me on a different path uh, was to work for Microsoft. Okay. Um, and do corp like what you said, corporate sales. So I, I worked with large corporations. Conglomerates, yeah. household names. Fortune he said Microsoft, y'all. <laughs> he trying to be all humble over yeah. here in this bomber jacket, but he says he does sales for Microsoft. Just yeah. saying. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at. And I've been at Microsoft since 2017. Okay, so. well, guys, you met my homie JB. Hey, enjoy it. Thanks man. so much. Thanks We're gonna do this again. Yeah. Uh, we're always here for you guys. We want to educate you. We want to excite you, and we want to empower you into your future, into the business and the life that you want. Please, please, please remember, until next time, like, subscribe, do all the things. And until then, we are out of here.